Hi everyone, so welcome back to my channel and as you know, I'm Josh, I'm a data engineer at Google and today we have a special guest with us. She is Isha Rani and she has over 20 years of experience in the field of data engineering. She is an engineering leader at Microsoft. She has had leadership positions in companies like Expedia, LinkedIn, Intuit before joining Microsoft. So whatever she has to say, advices that she has to give, I would like to just have a candid conversation with her and hope that it is really helpful to all of you watching this and aspiring or existing data engineers. So Isha, thanks a lot for joining us today and uh, really appreciate uh, you taking time to be on this channel. Uh, would you like to say hi to our viewers uh, and just uh, give a general introduction about yourself? Okay, Th first of all, thank you for inviting me, Josh. Thank you to the audience as well for listening to us, both of us, right? Uh, so yeah, I have uh, close to 20 years of experience uh, working in IT industry. And uh, my latest decade is more into AI, ML, data sciences, data engineering, that kind of a world. Uh, first decade was more into software engineering, microservices, web services, mainframes, uh, that kind of, uh, you know, uh, tech stack. In terms of domains, I tried to do different kind of domains. I learned uh, travel. I worked in social media. I was part of LinkedIn. In travel, I was part of Expedia. Uh, I worked on gaming as well when I was with Nagaro. I worked on healthcare when I was with Dell. Uh, I worked on different kind of banking, score banking. Uh, I learned a little bit about investment banking when I was with RBS. Uh, payment systems, uh, those kind of things. Uh, I learned about taxation, accounting, and uh, from domain perspective when I was in Intuit. So yeah, uh, that is more about domain learning. And uh, I stay in Bangalore. That's, that's pretty much about me. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, Isha, for giving this introduction. And uh, I can see that you have worked on all uh, everything that a person can work on, especially when it comes to domains. And uh, I think this experience would really be helpful to our viewers. Uh, that advice I got very early in my career from one of my early mentors that, you know, try different domains and that's how you'll get a chance to work with multiple kind of personas, different kind of work styles. Healthcare people are very different, by the way. Finance has different kind of regulations. Healthcare has different kind of regulations. But if you talk about travel, it's a very different kind of an industry, right? If you talk about social media, it's a different kind of industry. So you learn different kind of things. And that experience helps a lot when you go to leadership, right? Because you have become very flexible as a person as a person you have become very uh, you know uh, uh, flexible and adaptable as well right so that helps in long run yep so good thing that you mentioned that uh, you know you kind of have to get out of your comfort zone in order to learn these different domains and and the more time you spend in a domain let's say if i if i spend 10 years in healthcare it's obviously very hard for me to move out and and the same thing happened i guess that this was one of the motivating factors for me to leave zs because all of my projects were in healthcare uh, so i wanted to learn something new and I, i'm really thankful to be able to do that so i definitely resonate with what you said uh, and you you obviously have been in a leadership position for so long but you also mentioned that you spent about 10 years of your experience in software engineering before you moved into data in different microservices and whatnot so tell us about how did you start your journey how i started my journey okay so the very beginning was more like when i was even uh, doing my engineering right uh, I so I, I did engineering in electricals. It was not in computer science, okay. But I had a passion for computers. I wanted to do it in computers or IT, but I didn't get that branch. But I wanted to learn those things, right? So, and that helped me to start uh, as a freelancer doing small, small HTML web pages. Some of my seniors helped me to learn. I didn't have any clue what is HTML, what is web page, right? Uh, right. They told me that okay, there is something like that. You can learn that. They gave me books and all. I learned from there and then I started contributing to small, small projects on website. So that's how it started. Uh, and when I started my official journey after my BTEC, that was with Dell. And that time it was, uh, I started from mainframes. So that was a very different kind of a, you know, framework, I would say. Uh, so a pretty much good amount of years I was in mainframes, but the good thing was uh, I got a chance to work on web services as well. So I, at some time I was very stubborn that, okay, I have to move out of mainframes because somehow uh, some people also guided me, some mentors, some seniors. I also felt it's not the future. So I thought, okay, let's move out from it. And then that's when I learned big data and slowly and gradually I shaped my career in that direction. I guess it was 
10 years back so it was like right before the boom of big data so you were in a good position yeah, it, yeah. so that time right. big data just started i think it was 2012 and so in india it just started right. know, big data. Uh, so uh, the exposure was limited but willingness was really high to learn that right right amazing so talking about transitioning from software engineering to data engineering or any other field we have a message from today's sponsor let's take a look at that you want to get into data engineering and get some projects to work with but then what do you show on your resume right so that's why project pro is a perfect fit to solve this answer project pro is a website where you'll get more than 3000 plus code recipes and if you go for the paid subscription, you'll have access to more than 250 end-to-end -end projects. These projects are built and curated by industry experts in various companies working in data science, big data, or machine learning. Whether you want to work on open source projects like Apache Hadoop, Hive, Edgebase projects, or Spark projects, or whether you're looking for cloud technology specific projects, for example, GCP projects, Project Pro can help you get started with all types of projects and also can help you with end-to-end -end architecture diagrams and implementation. Also, if you use my link mentioned in the description and in the comment section, you'll definitely get some great additional discounts. Now, back to the video. Let's talk about women in tech because this is an interesting topic. And uh, it's I, I guess you have recently been featured in, in, in a Microsoft article as well, describing you as a Shiro. Uh, so that's 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 great congratulations by the way and uh, thank you obviously here it gets polarized one is a few people think that you know it's challenging to uh, succeed and go to a leadership position as a woman and the second part is who believes that it's easier to do so if you are a woman you know because they say that uh, you know there are specifically campus recruitment drives for women who code etc etc for different companies so if a lot of men you know, a lot of especially students say that if i was a girl i would have been selected in that company so what is your point of view on that being a woman in the industry and going to a leadership position did you find it easier or did you find it harder i think they both are correct in their own way and i'll tell you how if you want to do something, if you have willingness, if you are determined as a girl, uh, definitely you will get some, uh, you know, uh, help because people are there to help. You know, people want to help girls. Uh, everyone appreciates the problem. Everyone understands the diversity ratio and everyone wants to help girls. That is a reality. All the companies, all the good companies, they have women in tech programs, women in product programs, and they want to help girls to grow. So there is a lot of support available. So if you are determined, if you have that willpower, if you want to do something, definitely a lot of support is there. I know a lot of colleges have, a, a, what do you call that? A, what we have quota system, right? right? There was have that for girls, right? So if, if as a girl, you are determined and you have that strong willpower, definitely the whole world will support you. I can guarantee that. Everyone will support you if you want to do that. But where the problem comes is, do you want to do that? Right. I'll, I'll share a very recent example. I was going in a cab. I met a very young girl. I, just looking at her, I could guess she's just a fresher. And I asked her, what is your vision? What do you want to do after 10 years? And she laughed. She was like, 10 years? I don't know. I'm just, uh, I just have a plan to do the job for and a half, two years. And after that, I'll get married. And, uh, you know, I just want to set up. And I was shocked. I asked her from where you did the BTEC and to my, that was the sh sh most shocking part from IIT. Can you believe that? <laughs> she had all the right exposure. She, she, she was from Delhi and uh, she is from a nice city. She is from, uh, she got schooling from some very, I am not able to recall maybe Delhi public school or some very renowned school from Delhi. Okay. Excellent schooling, excellent backup from family, no money issues. You know what was lacking? What? Can you guess what, what was the lacking? Drive the desire. But why that was lacking? She was not seeing an idea. Come on, you got into IIT. Someone, <laughs> someone else's seed got wasted, right? She said, she, and she was taking it very lightly. She said, "No, I, I don't think you know. I'd never seen um, my sisters, my cousins. Everyone does that. They go to you know good schools. That is good. They go to good colleges. That is." for their reputations, for their parents' reputations, for their own satisfaction. 
but when it comes to job it's you know we'll do it for i have not seen anyone doing it around beyond two to two and a half years right so it's one and a half two two and a half years after that i've seen everyone gets married and they settle down in the family so she was okay. not seeing any ideal in you know in her family or maybe relatives or maybe friend circle i think the, the point you made that males feel that if they, it it might have been easier for them if they would be a female maybe weight might be easier because um there's focus on grooming girls right on giving them leadership guidance giving them that uh, you know um, expertise how they can grow so because there is a focus maybe chances for them getting that guidance is more uh, let's say if you are the mentor out of 10 girls only one is coming to you so definitely you will say yes to that girl right out of 10 boys maybe 10 are coming to you and you'll have to choose eight and then two are lacking and those two might feel that okay if they would have been a girl maybe you would have said <laughs> both are equally right at their own points right but the point but the problem is still there right uh, right i think you summed it up perfectly i mean you also gave a little a lot of reasons that why is it so all right so what inspired you to join microsoft after intuit and since you are in a you know leadership position how was your interview experience uh, in terms of uh, how is it different than coming somebody who is in a mid senior position to an absolute leadership position okay so uh, what was the so your first question was what was the yes. inspiration going to microsoft uh, obviously i mean microsoft is a good company uh, it's a good brand and uh, recruiter explained me about the role right so I, when i was uh, you know when they reached me it was i didn't even complete 2 years in intuit so i definitely i was not looking out for change but when they reached me and the recruiter explained me about the role it was pretty impressive right uh, 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 the domain was impressive and i as you got to know already right i want to try different domains every time right so the domain, domain was very interesting uh, in terms of leadership also it was pretty interesting role uh, in terms of title in terms of your leveling everything was nice. good right so and there was a lot of opportunity in terms of leadership as well as uh, in your tech right and definitely domain was new so that is what i generally look for you know uh, at least uh, you know two learnings you should have leadership domain and tech out of three at least two should be there and here i was getting all three right so which was a good thing for me so that was the inspiration to start giving the interviews at that time also i told the recruiter very clearly that i may not it may not work because i'm not looking for a change right so it may not work uh, but let's see how the interviews go and i understand more about the role because for me it's very important what role i'm getting right uh, coming back to your second question um, how different it was right i think there was not much difference uh, you know because you everyone wants tech leaders right they will ask you a lot of techy things right uh, so they will ask you all the design discussions different kind of technology different kind of tech stacks how you can how you can consolidate them and you can come up with the best design right if not best at least something which you can justify and it's more about your thought process you know to see how much you know about the tech how much you are aware of the latest uh, technology trends so it was interviews were more about those things only okay got it makes sense and uh, in talking about one big elephant in the room like i personally have been uh, affected a lot mentally by it that the layoffs happening for example at google when i when i read the email from uh, sundar pichai that you know a lot 12000 folks have been laid off my heart kind of sank it was it was like the reality got hit for the first time because for me it was my first ever layoff experience where people around me were getting laid off let's see how it all goes right but obviously there is a mental anxiety during all this and since you have been in the industry for so long you have obviously seen a lot of this happening and recently it ha- happened with all tech giants so what is your advice to somebody who is going through this uh, uh, e- even if they are being laid off or not obviously their mental health is being affected so what is your advice during this time only two things okay first is let's accept once we accept the problem half of the problem is solved right and the problem is yes times are difficult we are in uncertain time uh, there is a lot of anxiety not only i mean the anxiety is at every level right it's not that only you are stressed right your managers also would be stressed their managers also would be stressed not only because they are worried about their job but also they have to take care of you 
people under them right they are the leaders they must be more worried than you because they have to take care of you and other team members in their team right so yes everyone is worried economy is not good right it's not that people want to do it right and that's why they are doing it or people are enjoying whoever is taking the decision they are enjoying it one thing i can guarantee is that no one is enjoying this phase no one not a single person whoever is the decision maker they are the people i can guarantee you they must be in in the most stressful situation because they are they they are, they are taking the responsibility i i have read the email which you are talking about sundar email he the first line was i'm taking the responsibility right it that's not easy phase right the first thing is uh, i would say let's accept that yes situation is not good we are in difficult times and yes anxiety is all around that is where we are let's accept that and let's think about what next right second thing is yes what next what we can do right what is in our control these layoffs are not in our control right we are not decision makers we can't do anything what is in our control doing the best work of our life and keep upskilling yourself right and we talk about keep talking about upskill 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 upskilling doesn't mean doing any course or you know uh, you know reading a lot of material or going through a lot of linkedin posts how you'll upskill by doing that and your company is still giving you that opportunity till the time you're not getting that letter right rather than thinking about that thank thank for that particular days let's say you have one month or two months or three months you don't know right now maybe you're not in the list at all right so rather than being worried about that think about okay whatever number of days i have let me do the best work of my life and upskill doing that work right right let's say they have given six months that okay in six months uh, they'll conclude the practice of laying off and or something right now one option is that in, in this six months you'll be completely stressed out another option is that in six months you'll do the best work of your life after six months two of the one things will happen one that uh, you would be laid off in that case because you have worked so well in six months you'll be all prepared for your interviews you won't have to be worried about right you are already ready for your new job everything is positive right compared to those people who didn't take it positively at that time who were very stressed who didn't work at all they have to start preparing for the interviews now right but you are all set and let's talk about the second option you are not laid off right you are not laid off when you look back at your six last six months you'll again feel proud of you that i have done my best maybe you'll get promoted after six months you never know right i'm just giving an example maybe after one and a half years maybe after two years maybe after three years but that effort everyone is seeing right everyone is seeing how well you're performing right someday that will be paid off yep uh, that's a that's a great positive spin on this and i think it's perfect to end on this positive note uh, thank you so much isha for being with us and i hope it was useful to our audience as well and uh, i hope a lot of people were able to get inspiration from her isha would you like to say some last advice to our viewers or parting words i would say no i would just say you know stay positive uh, again i would repeat these are difficult times stay positive keep learning keep upskilling and do the best work of your life uh this is you know a tagline from intuit actually we want to enable uh, you know in intuit we say the leaders should be enabling their uh, team members to do the best work of their lives so that's what i would say uh, let's do the best and let's feel proud in ourselves right very well said thanks a lot isha thank you for inviting me thanks again josh very nice talking to you thank you for watching this video and it was definitely an interesting conversation and i hope it was helpful to you all as well don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel see you next time